Boom. We are, uh, it's Pickle Pod presented by, who's it presented by? You can choose. Uh, Relight, our favorite drink mix. Wait, I've got the. Uh, there it is. That's oh. the, the With real 10x the electrolytes of other leading brands and a special code for our listeners. Use pickleball at checkout for, I believe it's 15% off, but uh, I swear by the stuff, keeps my muscle cramps away, and it tastes amazing. And it's all natural, no additives, anything, so it's like perfect. Uh, how was that? I didn't know we were gonna, you were going to throw me a percented by, but uh, I think yeah, I... Uh, we're, we're getting a lot of curveballs today because yeah. we got stood up. We had a guest. Pod, we had a guest. Mm -hmm. We posted about it on social media. 10% of the freestyle boys yeah, were going to be here. 10% of the freestyle boys was going to join. Uh -huh. uh, and he couldn't make it probably because the other 90% was like, no. You can't. <laughs> yeah. Because the boss, the boss said no. Yeah. <laughs> and that's oh, fine. Well. I don't yeah. judge. I don't judge him for that. His loss. And that's okay. Actually, I checked the bracket. He's definitely on the court right now. And, uh, so he scheduled, he scheduled to be on here, but then yeah. he also knew he was going to be on a court at this exact time. Yeah. So I want to know which one came first and I want to understand what happened, but mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to wait. Some that. people are just bad at logistics, you know, logistics. Did you just call it logistics? Logistics. <laughs> what do you call it? Logistics. Logistics. Logistics, logistics, log. It starts with L O G. Dude, crazy town pronunciation. Okay, logistics. Fine. Uh, Look, I, I'm still learning. I'm not. I'm not too proud to admit that I'm still learning logistics. Some people are poor at logistics. Is that better? You can cut all that other stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're still going to do the pickle pod because yeah. that's yeah. how we roll. Wait, no, we have a, so, uh, sorry, like, I'm texting because I'm getting us a guest. Uh, oh, you he's, are? He's going to jump on. And so that means that once he does get on this podcast, we're going to be talking all uh, Dundon, MLP, APP, okay. uh, PPA, all that stuff, growth of the sport. Uh, he has some really interesting takes on it. So we'll get him yes. on in a moment here. Wow. A backup guest why well, we I on wanted the fly on, i wanted to have him on earlier uh -huh. but our schedules there's a conflict and then it didn't happen okay mostly because he puts some videos out there and they're he has some really interesting takes because he's been around the sport for forever and he understands all the sort of like inner workings of the different organizations and the different parties and so he has some really interesting takes so i i, I wanted to get him on here to kind of give us the spiel but you're not going to tell us who it is. Um, I can't. It's Scott Golden, but I wanted to set it up like that so that when we clip this for social media, uh -huh. it up. And, Huge you know, surprise. Yeah. Um, like Scott. Hold on. I just need to text him back. Or is it needing to? Okay. You text him back and I'll fill the airwaves with empty sounds. Um, lots of news still though and uh, all the pros are migrating or have already migrated to Arizona Desert Ridge the PPA the f first PPA of the year correct yeah I'm gonna and uh, I'm going to fly out tonight I'll be you're there you're flying out tonight I might stop by Sunday if I show up it'll be Sunday so um, okay um I know I that they have what I'm 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 staying at a buddy's house who lives in Phoenix mm -hmm. uh, like Stay in my apartment. I'll give okay. you my car. He's not even going to be there. So I cool. have, he has a house. So party so house. his house. I'm living like a bachelor this weekend. That's going to be cool. That will be cool. Are you pretty excited? So, I'm happy to have a car because that was going to be a logistical nightmare. <laughs> See, that sounds fine. Logistics. Sure doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like L O W logistics. <laughs> sure, fine, whatever, dude. Um, okay. Well, while we're waiting for Scott, let's get into some of our stuff, dude. Yeah. Well, all right. We have to. We kind of have to adjust here, but we can talk about the most recent news because you did kind of touch on it. But the APP finally. Actually, let's save this for when 
Scott gets on. Yeah, give us something that Scott doesn't need to be a part of. Okay. Let's talk about um, who the hell NML Pickleball is. Because I've got a theory. Yeah, but we want Scott's theory too, but we can hit him. Okay. okay NML. NML Pickleball. Uh, for- I, like, I like this. Let's wait for Scott too. So those are – those will be like our two things. Cause I, okay. But I want to, he'll know what NML pickleball is. And for those that do not know, there yeah. is a blog out there, a publication called NML pickleball. It has all the insider info that most probably only a pro who has seen all the paperwork from the tours, et cetera, would be privy to. And so they're giving us a lot of information. They're giving us information before it even hits any of the, anybody else's ears and so they've been a great source who are they they're anonymous and uh is it good for the sport um yeah i okay so any news coverage anybody giving insights into the pro game good for the sport okay people have had pushback because they're anonymous and therefore they can kind of say whatever they want and they don't have to stand by their opinions Mm. so they can sort of just like throw shit at the wall okay is that good or bad they're not accountable. Well, there's good and bad to that. To you know, like they don't even, have to bite their tongue to please an employer or something like that. If like right. they're contracted with a tour here and then they like speak out against like the format of their contract. Right. Okay. Got it. They don't have any sponsors. They don't have any alliances. They don't have to think about what they're saying and the consequences. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, you know, our blog, we try and be as open, honest, unbiased as possible but at the same time you know we don't want to step on people's toes so that is in the back of our our mind sometimes so they sort of have the the freedom to say whatever the heck they want which i think is a good right bad thing they've ruffled a lot of feathers they've had some takes that were wrong they've had some takes that were uh interesting they were the first ones to have them Mm -hmm. and they have uh often information that in my opinion only pros would know and one thing I've noticed about them is their writing ability, their um, like the like professionalism and mm-hmm. and the uh, like takes they've had have just improved since when they first started. Okay, and I I wonder if that's because they've added on a third person because they're slim and gritty, or if. Um, or, and, and like, if there is a third person, I would suspect that that is an actual pro that's on tour or they have, um, just created a relationship that they're getting fed information. Correct. Or the third theory would be, and this is less relevant about who they are, but the third theory about why their styles changed is I think maybe early on they were masking who they are by writing with like shitty grammar, um, you know, kind of having like there's really no presentation of the content they put out there. Okay. Uh, and maybe they were trying to just like throw people off the the trail by doing that. Yeah. Uh, I know I do that a lot. I act dumb everywhere I go. So people think that I'm dumb and don't uh, know how super smart I am. Yeah. Like I'll say words like logistics. Right. Which goes back to the Latin root of the word. And most people don't know that, but you're smarter than most people. Correct. So a dumb, dumb, a dumb, dumb Midwesterner like me will be like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to say it, but you know that it is in fact, exactly how you say it. Correct. So, uh, we can both agree that that's how you pronounce, uh, logistics, logistics. And, uh, I didn't say logistics. I said logistics. Um, so this NML person, uh, who is Most doing people. these or multiple people are doing all these writings and have all this insider info. And um, yeah. And I think, yeah, it's good for, it's good for the sport because we can see kind of like the inner more, you know, everybody has like a window into what's actually happening with the pros and these tours and all of this stuff. And uh, when I first saw this, NML pickleball thing pick uh, pop up. All I could think of was the Netflix documentary. Don't F with cats. Yeah. Where, right. Yeah. Crazy doc. Yeah. 
It's a crazy, crazy documentary, not for the faint of heart, but essentially all these internet sleuths track down IP address, look at the photos, look at the way things are posted, look at the things, the way things are worded. They pinpoint a location, they pinpoint like all this stuff. And within that, like they dialed it in all the way, I think, to the apartment complex where this guy was living on the documentary. And so unless you are super savvy in the technical realm, someone who is super savvy in the technical realm will then be able to find you if you're posting think, on the I've, internet. There, and they've definitely left trails. There are some really good theories. And here's my, here's my thing. I told them I emailed them. So I've, yeah. you know, they've written, you've us. had correspondences with them. Yeah. And so I emailed them recently and I was like, get a voice changer, come on the pod. And they said, no. So here is what I'm going to say. <laughs> Next episode I'm going to reveal my theories. I'm going to name these people. Is that and blackmail? Is it? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be a part of it. I, why can't I guess who's writing this stuff? You can and guess. I, I don't even know who I'm blackmailing because they're, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so how can I blackmail people who don't exist? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm either, I'm going to say my theories next uh -huh. time. They could be next wrong. episode. Right. Okay. Or they could get a voice changer and come on the pod. And then you won't say your theories. Hold on. 10% of the freestyle boys is calling me. Oh, come on. Hello. Got to put it on speaker. You want to hop on now? <laughs> okay. You can, yeah, you have the link in your calendar. Just jump on that. <laughs> Is he going to join us courtside? No, no, we're live right now. I'm literally talking to you. This is on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our guest is here. Oh, that's funny. Well, should we have Scott Golden on too? <laughs> can we do four people? You could do four. It gets a little tricky and bouncy around, but I mean, we haven't well, ever tried it. We haven't ever tried it. When was we're Scott going to jump on? Anyway, and he's like, okay, tell him not to worry about it. Tell them we'll have them on next week. If it, okay. that works. This is fun. This is funny. I feel bad, but I really want to get him on though because he's really good yeah. takes about all this stuff. So where is he... Rob right now? Is he courtside right now running to a hotel room or is he going to jump on his phone? Oh, and I also revealed who our now. guest is. What did you say? I said, our guest today when they called you, were they courtside, just got off the court, or were they already back at a hotel room, or like? I think he was just, I think he, maybe he just got off the court. Okay. But I told him we're live, so. Um, I'm just texting Scott and being like, sorry. <laughs> Listen, what's going to happen here is 10% of the Freestyle Boys is going to again be like, never mind, I got more matches. Yeah. And Scott's going to be well, like, okay, on. you already told me. Yeah, well played. He played Julian Arnold first. <laughs> first round so i don't i don't know like rob's had some i think some decent results in singles but he doesn't typically play singles he's more of a doubles okay. guy for sure did he Arnold has had like a couple good matches recently but he's he's sort of like new so I did think. he win or did he what's his you don't, don't know, know anything do you think maybe if i refresh i can see this thing yeah you probably can do you think people are enjoying listening to what we're talking about right now it's been a little uh, all over the place this episode, but maybe it's like more like they're just hanging out with us this episode. This scramble, this scramble. <laughs> I apologize, but it's we're still that. trying to be as professional as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, hey, we're just a little bit more authentic. Life throws you curveballs, you know, and if you can't react to the curveball, then, you know, maybe uh, you should. Uh, I know that Nunnery has some. Uh, and by the way, it is Rob Nunnery who's joining the podcast. I don't know if we mm -hmm. said that out loud. I said um, Rob, but I didn't say Nunnery, so it could have been Rob Cassidy, except for he's not 10% of the Freestyle Boys. So I think with some deductions, you could have figured it out. But yes, go on. Um, he has some good theories about NML. So. Ooh, good, good. So now we're just waiting, killing time, waiting for Rob Nunnery to join us. Well, he also, he also said that he is... Uh, he is NML Pickleball. Oh, he did? Yeah. As a joke? 
uh, yeah, it was clearly a joke, but like people on Facebook were like, is he serious? And it was like, no, it is obviously a joke. But he <laughs> could, he could be. I think people think I'm probably NML. People think, uh, people think, um, who else gets, probably think Scott Golden is NML. That'd be a good theory. A lot, I heard people were thinking it was actually Ben Johns for a little while until like the last week or two. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, th so, I actually thought that I actually thought that Rob Nunnery was the one feeding them the information at one point. Um, and could be the case, honestly. Well, we'll have to like really dig deep, do a deep dive here. And if not, we will contact the super <laughs> uh, internet sleuths from the documentary don't F with cats and get them on the case immediately. Have you seen the QAnon documentary? That's what it reminds me of too. That's a really interesting one. Oh, where they're trying to find the- They're trying to figure out who Q is. Yeah. Yeah. It's really wild. I think wild. I did watch that. That's like multiple. Oh yeah. So is, uh, so is don't F with cats. Uh, but you know, if you're on a computer or a phone somewhere, then you, you got to realize that people can find anything they can find, they can trace anything that sends from your computer or from your phone back to your computer and your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why one, you should never, you should always be careful about what you're saying, whether mm -hmm. you think you're in private where you are on like a public forum, like Twitter Two, my Sage advice. Is, yes. Spy on, spy on me all you want. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I don't have anything to hide. If you want to like put the camera on, Okay. I've Deep dive. It. It'll help um, protect the country. Yeah. Okay. That's my uh, very, that's my very, um, I guess you could say that's a conservative theory. All right. Okay. Rob Monterey. <laughs> Here he is. <coughs> Rob. God, I'm the worst podcast guest in the history of podcast guests. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, we guys. already were pretty uh, uh, relentless <laughs> on you as we, as you just went MIA on us. Yeah. <laughs> We started. Uh, we started. It's court form. I, I I apologize. This is not the first did, time, and hopefully it is the last time. But I'm sorry. Did you get your steps in at least on the court? I was literally close those rings on your eye. And talking to oh, them all. You were. I thought you you haven't played yet this morning. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't meant to be in the singles draw. I'm not quite sure why I was in it, but there's no intention of playing. Oh, so you did not even play even though your name is on the singles draw. Correct. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be in there. So I'm not a singles. But you're still getting paid by the PPA to be playing singles currently today. You're just getting like a bonus. No. Okay. <laughs> I, get nothing for, I get nothing for playing singles other than, other than pulled muscles. Okay. Yeah. They is, I actually played some singles yesterday and was like, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. No, bodies meant, not not. meant for that stuff. Okay, no, but no, no bodies are meant to play singles. <laughs> are you? Uh, okay. Are you at the Desert Ridge Resort right now? I, uh, I'm close. I'm in Desert Ridge. I'm not at the JW though. Got it. You're at somewhere nicer. Yeah, somewhere that's not 600 a night. It's a thousand a night. Yes, you've got yes, to, dude. Dope. Like, I won't even <laughs> look at a place unless it's over a thousand a night. I like your form. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of questions for you. Uh, lots of news happening in the pickleball world. And uh, I'm sure you've yeah. addressed uh, a lot of it on your specific podcast, the Freestyle Boys. But uh, we want to get your take on some of it. Thomas, what do we have first? Okay, well, hard hitting we just... questions, hard hitting <clears throat> questions. Yeah, well, we were just, what were we just talking about? Okay, we were talking about all the chaos, of course, with PPA and stuff like that. But we were more focused on right before you jumped on who the hell NML pickleball is. And Rob, I know you have some interesting theories about this. I don't know whether you feel comfortable saying them all on camera, but I want to get your take outside of you, obviously being a contributor for NML pickleball, who are I mean, Slim and gritty. Who are they? Hold up. Hold up before we get into it, Rob, do you know who they are or no? I do not know. Okay. Okay. But you have theories. I mean, everybody has theories. I, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody's thinking about it, right? Or guessing or talking about who it could be. Um, it's clearly somebody that knows the world of pro pickleball pretty well. Um, like how closely linked would you say that they would, like they have to be close with a pro at the very least, right? At the very least. And I, I, I don't know. My, my thought has always been the only reason you would be anonymous is if you have some stake in, in the game, right? Whether it's, whether people know you, whether you have a business in it, whether you're a player, um, there's a reason they're anonymous, right? They don't want, they don't want to be judged by others, which is, which is ironic because that's what their business is, is judging others. So yeah, I just, I, yeah, I hate the idea of anonymous blogs. Um, I think if you have an opinion, like I fundamentally disagree with having opinions and hiding behind your opinions on a keyboard. I think if yeah. you have an opinion about especially a community as small as pickleball, stand it. You guys have a podcast, you have hot takes. You, uh, you know, you put your face and your name behind it, which I respect, you know, same thing with Ben and I, like we're, we're putting ourselves out there. We're in the pro community. Um, we say things that people don't agree with, but at the end of the day, it's our opinion and we stand behind it and we put our name and face behind it. So I just, yeah, I don't respect very <laughs> highly people that put opinions out that don't put their name behind it. Okay. Uh, playing devil's advocate here. Uh, Let's say it's somebody who has signed with the PPA, wants to share with the community like the inner workings of those contracts, but knows that uh, contractually maybe they're not even allowed to. Is that something that's good for the pickleball world to even be privy to is like those inner workings of the association and the uh, – their relationship with the pro pickleball players, et cetera. Like if it was a, a more uh, non-biased approach, would that be information that was helpful to the community? Yeah. I think if you're reporting hard news, um, it's, it's different, right? If you have an anonymous source and you need to protect your anonymous source, sure. Okay. Um, but if you're going to have opinions and hot takes and analysis, my thought is you should, you should stand behind it. Okay. Uh, I got bad news for you, Rob, probably next week NML is going to come out with some type of piece on Rob and uh, his poor attitude or something. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope so. Opinion piece. Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah. Opinion piece. Rob <laughs> Nuttery has a poor attitude about. <laughs> Wait, Rob, you, Rob, you know that, uh, you know that I told them to get a voice changer and come on the podcast. Cause I sent you that screenshot. <clears throat> I issued yeah, a totally. warning right. I issued a warning right before you got on the pod, and I don't think you can blackmail anonymous people. So I think I'm in the clear here. I don't know. I don't want to be a part <laughs> of it still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thomas, you're on your own. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, I am going to reveal who I think it is on next episode, unless they come on the pod or um, maybe they like write a blog for us or, or something like that. So we'll see if we, we'll see if we hear from them. We'll see if they respond to, we'll see if they negotiate with terrorists. We'll see if they come out of their mom's basement. Yeah. Ooh. Easy. Okay. Ooh. So now we got to look at every person linked to professional pickleball that lives in their mom's basement. That's a lot of people, Rob. We can, yeah, we gotta narrow it, you got to narrow it down more. <laughs> well, that still doesn't eliminate me. So. That's uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You're still young. You're you're still under thirty. You should be living in your mom's basement. All right, Nunnery. I want to know what is your because you've kind of alluded to it, and we've we've talked before. You alluded to it a little bit on on your podcast. What's your background like? What was your like career wise? Um, or let's start with like your tennis background. Moving to like what you were doing for the past. I don't know. 15 years before you got into pro How old are you, Rob? Let's start with that. 36. Okay, so you've lived a life. Yeah, a few, okay. it feels like a few lives, but yeah. So yeah, yeah played, played college tennis at UNC Asheville. Um, obviously grew up playing junior tennis. Um, so yeah, played, played one year at Stanford University in Alabama my freshman year, then transferred to University of North Carolina at Asheville. Cool little mountain liberal school. Uh, Asheville is a great spot. That was really the reason I wanted to go there is just because I fell in love with the mountains in Asheville. Um, after school, after school, coached some, uh, went to, went to China, went to New Zealand, went to Europe, was a private coach for a kid in Scotland. Um, 
came back from that and coached, coached college tennis at Stony Brook University on Long Island, then Georgia State University, and then Drake University in Iowa, been around. Um, so that was all up until like maybe 24, 23, 24. And then I got out of, I got out of uh, tennis at the time and was just like, you know, I could have a life in tennis, but kind of want to prove myself in other arenas. Uh, Cause up to that point, like tennis was my full on identity is all I ever did from, you know, as a kid up to, up to then. So I was just, I wanted to see what I could do outside of that. And then had a bunch of random jobs that I hated, hated going to an office, hated that whole nine to five thing. Um, and then found this, I, I had gotten really into the idea of having my own business. Cause I just really valued the idea of not so much making a lot of money, but the idea of being able to live wherever I want, do whatever I want and spend time with people I love. Like if I, like if I had a family, which I don't right now, but um, the idea of having to go to a job every day and not be able to spend time with kids or my wife, I, that, that idea seemed terrible to me. Um, so basically started looking at a bunch of different opportunities business wise and found this random thing on a business forum um, in 20, I think 2013. And it was basically like, hey, um, we're inviting eight different guys that want to learn how to do media buying, which I didn't know what media buying was at the time. It was basically online advertising. And we're going to invite you guys out here. We're going to put you guys all in a room. Uh, we'll, pay you, we'll pay you peanuts. I think it was like 200 bucks a week or something, nothing. But it was the opportunity was to learn a skill set that you could then parlay into a business uh, with the other guy. So I was like, screw it. We were living in Georgia at the time. Um, and I was, went up to my wife and I was like, hey, we're moving into Mexico next week. She's like, okay. Uh, it was just down for it. So we drove to New Mexico. I basically learned how to do online advertising at this place. It turned out these guys were kind of scammy and um, didn't end up paying us what we were actually meant to be paid, even though it was well, a hold lot. On. Hold on. So the, the guys you found on a random business forum who told you to on drive the internet. to Mexico and work in a basement and pay you $200 to yes. do media buying ended up being sketchy. So that's <laughs> shock was. But when you made the decision, was that already in your subconscious? Like, at the very least, I'm going to have a story here. <laughs> no, like I was, I, it, wasn't just, it wasn't about a story, but it, it turned into a good one. Uh, it was more about like I had drawn this line in the sand of, of I was just tired of having a job that I didn't like. And I wanted okay. to pursue something, anything else. And so it turned into a good thing because um just a few short months there me and a me and my buddy that i met there actually we were like we can do this way better we know what we're doing we taught ourselves how to do this they didn't even teach us anything all they did was lock us in a room and make us figure it out which was good because it turns out if you focus on something you can actually progress pretty fast uh so me and this dude we started our own business we left for thailand lived in thailand for a year basically and uh got the business up and running there and yeah that's that that had been really what got me into business and what I had been doing from like 2013 up until I sold my half of the business to my partner, that same partner. And I think 2017 or 2018. <clears throat> got it. And is that so, when you chose to start playing pickleball at that point? No, not yet. Um, I started pickleball. I think the first day I started pickleball was August or something, August or September in 2019 was kind of the okay. first time I touched a paddle. Um, so between ending that business and starting pickleball, I was literally just screwing around and just trying to find something that I like to do. Like I did a podcast actually called fail on, which I basically spent a year traveling around the U S and Canada, interviewing interesting entrepreneurs on their story of, of, you know, going from failure to failure to success. Um, so was didn't really have any success. It depends what you call a success. What you call a success? <laughs> Did it help some people uh, hear interesting stories? Probably. I didn't really yeah. have much of a business plan behind it. It was more of just like a fun project. Is it still out there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you can still find it. But uh, I mean, personally, if you're going and meeting with all these entrepreneurs, then <laughs> you yourself are probably getting something from it, even if yeah. the pod isn't the number one pod on Spotify. So. Cool. Well, uh, I like that. I'm kind of in the same vein. I've uh, spent 80 hours a week for the last uh, however many of decades 
figuring out how to stay out of a 40 hour a week, uh, cubicle job. Yep. I think we're all doing a pretty good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a win. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well you were, you were, I actually was holding out hope that you were one of the normal people in pickleball, but it turns out you have a pretty strange background as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like I'm still one of the more normal. Yeah, you have yeah, the most the most normal yeah. background. There's Rob Nunnery really- has the most normal background in professional pickleball. <laughs> yeah. Which is not normal at all, but <laughs> Yeah, it is. I, I, but I think also Thomas, uh, I think part of that lends itself to the fact that it's a new budding sport. It's not like people are currently looking at it and being like, if I played pro pickleball, I'd make a, you know, a million dollars a year. Like it's not at that point when it gets to that point, then these backgrounds will be more like specifically geared from the time they were young to be professionals. Yeah, but so, okay. So I actually met up with a listener of the pod this morning. We got coffee. Um, we were you talking- just meet up with fans? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird flex. Like some- this is the stuff I do behind the scenes when you're, you know, you're off doing. What your did they say about me? You know, you're going on adventures and doing nature walks with with your family. I am nurturing the audience. Okay. I am, I am doing the uh, the the real work. <laughs> the heavy stuff. lifting. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, we were talking about this actually, and sort of the the takeaway was like this is pickleball itself is sort of like this new growing thing, but it's kind of on the edge where people are are like, what is that? And the same type of people who are investigating pickleball and already in this world are the same types of people who would investigate and be on the cutting edge of other spaces like cryptocurrency. Like a lot of them are like, sort of like they come from poker players, they're world travelers like Rob, right? They're these people who, sort of don't follow the normal path and go try out new and interesting things. They find a thing they love rather than trying to seek out what's going to make them the most money. And I think that's, yeah, that's uh, like my audience too, uh, coming from TV and I have a fan base there is that like the people are like, Oh, I've never heard of pickleball. And it's so like Tyson, his wacky nature to pick up this sport that nobody's heard of. And, uh, yeah, but I think that like that is the community of pickleball right now. Yeah. That and internet trolls. <laughs> and internet trolls. It's just that this demo these the demographic of pickleball doesn't fully understand, like on Facebook, like not to just be like, that's wrong. And you're like, actually that's right. And they're like, oh, well, I didn't know. It's like, well, why did you say anything then? <laughs> Like that's like every single conversation about pickleball on Facebook is like, you're doing it wrong. I don't think I am. Oh, are you not? Okay. Well, I'm pretty new to the sport. Right. (laughs) Speaking of internet, like I was on, I was just reading something on Facebook and it was like, so you have to pay for parking at the PPA this weekend and it's all done by JW, right? It's their JW Marriott. It's their parking lot. And someone was like, the PPA is so greedy, classic hidden cost. It's like, did you even spend like two seconds to think about where that charge is coming from? But they just go out there and they they make this like absurdly blunt statement on a public forum, get a bunch of, and then as soon as they find out that that's not the case, they're like, oh, well. Rob, what's your rebuttal there? Is the PPA taking our hard earned parking money? They are. They're they're actually a conglomerate <laughs> out to just take everybody's hard earned money via parking fees. Oh, that's it. I'm sure they cut a deal with JW to to keep all those parking fees. It's probably in their contract. You know, honestly, I know when events are held at hotels, uh, sometimes the event does get a percentage of those types of fees. I yeah, know I with poker know. specifically, is is a world I've come from in the past. Uh, the hotel will give a percentage of all the rooms that are bought with the the poker code, and they'll get a percentage of food that's utilized by the guys who have the the players' cards that are only there for poker, et cetera. And so, like, well, they're bringing in a thousand people to the to the correct. resort. Correct. So. Correct. Yeah. So why wouldn't they like get yeah. a, a share of what is being spent? So Thomas, yeah. that person on the forum might not be a hundred percent incorrect. No, well, whatever, dude. 
And there's only one way to find out. <laughs> we have to talk to NML Pickleball, see what they say. Well, Rob, so let's, let's, I want to stay on the topic of like kind of internet trolls here and you can call mm -hmm. them trolls. You yeah. can just call them highly opinionated people on social media, particularly in the pickleball community, because it is so intimate still. And these opinions tend to get out there. And a, a lot of people see them in this community. If you have something to say, yeah. what's something that you commonly see, whether it's, you know, on a blog like ours, on a blog like NML, in pickleball forum or something like 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 that, that you kind of look at and you just think, man, people get this wrong all the time, or maybe something that recently people are are getting wrong, and you're just kind of like, you know what? If you just knew, uh, you would you wouldn't think that way about it. And I'm not talking about like the PPA Dundon stuff because we'll get into that. But sure. maybe something more like general that you see that's sort of like a common misconception. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Like I, I keep track of some of the stuff in the forums and, and everything. I haven't actually read NML much recently. Um, obviously, love your guys' newsletter. Um, I don't know. I don't know about misconceptions, but I would say, and this isn't just, a, you know, blow smoke up your ass but like the the newsletter is legit it's like i i see stuff in the newsletter that i don't like I, i'm pretty i feel like i'm pretty in the know in what's going on in like the pickleball landscape and i'll see stuff on the newsletter i'm like what really like that person plays or that article came out that i did that i missed so i think you're doing a really good job in terms of uh kind of bringing like some hidden hidden news that i wasn't even privy to uh into the spotlight so i think i think that's cool that's um, mostly me. Well, yeah, I, I figured, um, but we need to give Thomas a little credit just so he sure. keeps going every day. Yes. Yeah, I agree, Rob. So you want to come? You want to come on next week too? <laughs> Am I out? <laughs> just hype man. Hype you. Yes. Um, no, I uh, I actually agree with you, Rob. There, uh, when I see the newsletter come through, I'm like, how does Thomas curate all of this information and well, we gather it and find it? We've got tons of people who help us. and Okay. So you're not taking all the credit. No, he's so humble. Yeah. Oh, J Jabes? Jabes has got his ear yeah. to the ground. Okay. Jabes. You're the one who came up with that nickname. Don't say Jabes with a question mark. That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I vaguely remember giving him that nickname, but I don't even remember his real nickname. J JB. JB, you can read his stuff oh, yeah. on Jabes. Blog. Yeah. You can read his stuff in the, in the newsletter. That's right. No, now I remember Jabe's. But yeah, we've got other contributors too. People send us stuff now. Um, and honestly, we get sent some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you should post that. <laughs> or ta or uh, you save one or two for the podcast every week. With the like weirdest DM? Yeah, if it's weird Ooh, and I, funny and- I like that. And, yeah, yeah, I'm like, going to use that for freestyle. I like that too. Oh, are you kidding me, Rob? <laughs> I thought this is a collaboration. We're we are. Together. We're collaborating. We're fine. You know, the, we're all the, the rising tide yeah. thing, you know? Yes. We all go up together. <laughs> all right, Rob. Rob. Rank the uh, Pickleball podcast. Go. Is this a trick question? Uh -oh. One freestyle, two freestyle, three freestyle, four freestyle. Should I go on? I'm not even familiar with freestyle. <laughs> the stroke? Swimming stroke? No, I love <laughs> swimming stroke. No, I, I honestly, I love, I love, the more podcasts and pickleball, the better is my take on it. Like I love when you guys started yeah. yours. Um, I think, yeah, I, I, I think more pickleball content is a good thing. Um, I don't look at you guys as a competitor. I like I would, any way I can help you guys. Like even like clearly coming on here. Like I want all pickleball. Can you podcasts well. send us money? Um, sure. <laughs> sure. It's kind of we're fine. <laughs> No, no, I, I agree too. I think that, you know, it's, uh, we're all still in this thing so early and if we can all help the sport grow and, you know, reach more people and we all have our own, I mean, we have a shared audience, sure, but we also have our own unique audiences and our unique reaches that are able to yeah. kind of help everybody out and help the sport, uh, get to where we want it to be. Agreed. Um, all right. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about all these 
latest developments. So first of all, you signed with uh, PPA, yeah? Correct. Are you on, uh, are you on a, and you don't have to reveal this on the pod. Are you on a one year? Are you on a three year? I signed three year. So you yeah. obviously have faith in where the PPA is headed, in what Dundon is doing with the PPA, Pickleball Central, pickleballtournaments.com and where that might take the, the pro game. Yeah. I mean, look, I, everybody's looking at this as kind of like uh, this versus this. And I literally never, from the beginning when I signed, I never envisioned it getting to this point, honestly. Like, I never thought signing with the PPA was choosing a side. Just never even crossed my mind. Um, so it's crazy unfortunate that, you know, that things have turned out kind of the way they are, where now it's a this versus this, these people versus these people. Like, I think it's horrible for the sport. Um, you know, it's been horrible for me personally, you know, living, living in dreamland. It's, it's just created a lot of division that I feel like is unnecessary. You know, i I feel like I made the best decision for myself and for my family from a financial perspective. I, to be totally frank, even after sponsorships last year, I lost tens of thousands of dollars playing pro, pursuing pro, pro pickleball. I didn't have a sin, single entry fee covered last year. I didn't get a single stipend. And I had the opportunity this year to have all that covered and to get an appearance fee. I have to take it. Like it, To me, it's a no-brainer. I just never expected it to be because I did this, I am now blackballed put on an island from this side, if that makes sense. So I just think it's super unfortunate. Um, I think that, I think, you know, the side of Dreamland thinks I betrayed them when in reality, from a financial perspective, I had no choice. Like I needed to. Yeah. And keep in mind, I think you're widely considered one of the top men's players. Um, and, and that's your position, right? There's, there's plenty of, of men's and, and women's players who would be ranked below you and likely losing more than, than what you lost. Right. So well, it's still I, very difficult to make pro pickleball a, a profitable in, endeavor for a lot of these players. So, or so livable, like yeah. you saw the opportunity to make that happen and you, you took it. Yeah. So Rob, I wanted to backtrack just a hair there. You're living at dreamland, which is the home of major league pickleball. We saw that Major League Pickleball partnered with the APP. You are signed with the PPA. Is that uncomfortable for you to live at Dreamland? Are you planning to stay there? Are those contracted PPA players planning to stay there? Is that something you can't comment on? What is, what's like the feeling there with those players and the organization there as well? Yeah, I, I can't really speak for anybody else. Um, I think I might be the only one that signed the three year. Uh, okay. I'm not totally sure to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, it's uncomfortable for sure. Um, you know, there is, I, I'm a duper sponsored player. I believe in what duper is doing. I feel like they're on the right track to, you know, they're modeling UTR. I think it's going to be, I think that's the right model for pickleball. Um, so to be a duper sponsor player, to be on site at Dreamland, and, you know, they asked us for dates that we could shoot. They had a shoot there. They flew people in from all over the country, and I wasn't invited to the shoot at my, at my home, basically. So it's like, they're, they're, yeah, it just feels like I'm being put on an island a little bit. And whether that's the case or not, maybe, maybe they just had a full roster, like they said, and they didn't need me, or maybe they already had stuff with me. I don't know. Um, but I'm just, I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to explain how it feels from my perspective. Yeah, right. Um, and but again, then what I is the action you take based on that feeling? Are you planning to stay there? Yeah. It, look, it's been, it's, it's been pretty apparent that um, they're looking at it as me choosing a side. So mm -hmm. it already feels awkward there. Am I being kicked out? evicted i don't i don't know um but it's uncomfortable and 
like I'm not I'm not going to live somewhere where it's uncomfortable for me. It's uncomfortable for my wife. It's it's a weird situation. Um, I would just say it doesn't feel like I'm very welcome there, you know, um, which is super unfortunate. Like these I'm talking like these are close friends of mine that right. I feel like it's it just really sucks, man. Yeah, it's the kind of the business has I I mean and business does that sometimes to to friendships and relationships. Uh is because we've talked about it being so new and maybe right now it seems like a line is being drawn, but is there a point where maybe it pushes past that and people are just like, Oh, okay, like it it will eventually work itself out. I I have no doubt. But yeah is there hope for you to, to stay there and just like, let's write it out for a couple months, see like the trajectory of everything or is it past that? Uh, no, it, it feels kind of past that. Um, yeah, I, no, like, uh, yeah, we're not going to be staying there. Um, do I hope, do I hope, you know, those relationships are, you know, you know, not not burn bridges i yes like like i said these are people consider i like people that i consider good friends you know spend christmas right. with them that kind of thing um so i have one million percent hope that you know these aren't burn bridges and these are relationships that can continue um i would just say that it feels like i'm on an island now and it feels uncomfortable and i don't feel very welcome in in kind of that community so um yeah uh, any plans on where to go? What you're gonna be? Arizona, you're here right now. Pretty great. I get, I get you a spot. I get you a spot in this building right here. Thanks, bro. We live right <laughs> next. We live right next door to me. No, the the timing's been That's interesting. Little... Um, I I am yeah. So can you can you guys hear all right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the timing's been a little interesting in terms of um. I basically, I basically accepted a, a role, kind of a seasonal role, um, where I'll be splitting time out in Maui. Um, oh, that sounds terrible. Probably till June. Probably till June, and then in June I'll be based somewhere on the mainland for the summer, and then probably go back to Maui come September. Um, but with the dog, with you know all the logistical stuff to get our dog out there, with the quarantine type stuff that they have to go through, then to get to get her back to the mainland for the summer months. It's just kind of a nightmare. So, so we're going to keep her, keep her over here until summer. And then we'll be with her in the summer, then move her over to Hawaii in the, in the fall. Um, but yeah, so I'm still, still playing kind of a full slate of tournaments. Um, just going to be a lot more travel <laughs> between them. Yeah. So I'll, so I'm actually going there. I'm going to Hawaii come Sunday after this tournament. Mm -hmm. When you're in Hawaii, are you, so you're going to be coming back to the mainland for all for all the PPAs that you need to take part in. Yeah, I mean there might be a couple that maybe are on the, you know, East Coast, that if it's just a one-off event and there's not something the following weekend that I might not be able to play, right. uh, just purely because of distance. Mm -hmm. uh, but most everything, yeah, schedule will be kind of as is normal as is. Okay, cool. And uh, can you tell us what you're doing in Maui? pickleball pickleball adjacent yeah it's um yeah basically t took a director a director role with uh, uh a discovery land property mckenna um in maui so okay. gonna be helping kind of get that program up and running and yeah hanging out hanging out on the beach very cool yeah i'll come visit for sure yeah we don't have to invite thomas but we can if we want to it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether, whether you invite me or he's not. Nurturing <laughs> <You're coming. the laughs> <audience. laughs> he's yeah. nurturing. You have to stay back and nurture the audience. Yeah. While I take my yeah, family to Maui. I don't need okay. to be invited anymore. <laughs> we probably have audience in Maui as well that needs to be nurtured. Dude, we've got some interesting lists. We've got, when you look at the little map, mm -hmm. um, we're kind of global, dude. There's maybe of like course one, we're global. <laughs> like one uh, person, you know. I also but, want to run it back a little bit. <clears throat> You said the word logistics, Rob, can you say that word for us one more time? Because Thomas and I earlier, before you showed up, had an argument. He corrected me on the pronunciation. Well, you've already toned down your pronunciation. You've already <laughs> adjusted it based on what you said 
first. Time. I just want I didn't want Rob to like be. I haven't heard it. Yeah. yeah you, I, I, so you you tell say us tell us the word again. Logistics. No, you corrected yourself. You said logistics the first time. <laughs> he didn't say logistics. Oh, I would never say logistics. I'm not a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Okay, I concede. Logistics. I'm so sorry. I'm 42. I just learned a new thing. Uh, all right. Let's. let's uh, funny, funny story. Like. I, okay. I go. No. So I, I I followed pickle. I mean, I followed football forever growing up. I was a big fan of um, of. The, the the Packers quarterback that played the most games, started the most games in a row, whatever the stats are. You guys know who this is? No. It's the guy before Aaron Rodgers. Brett. I've heard, Brett of, Favre. I've heard of this man. Yeah. So I, I went basically my whole life thinking it was Brett Farr, like F-A-R. And oh. then I was like a ridiculous age where – I followed football closely at the time. So when somebody told me Brett Favre, I was, I was ready to get into a fist fight to prove that they were wrong. I was like, no way it's Favre. Are you insane? I've been watching this guy for my whole life. It's Brett Favre. And like, it really blew my mind. It, like, <laughs> I was like, it was you one of the know which way was here. up. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really changed everything for me. That's when like everything went sideways. Yeah, wow. completely distraught over the spelling of a of a name, just like Tyson is is distraught over the pronunciation of a word. No, I am not. I swore I heard logistics from Rob. Yes, I mean that's fine. But you earlier, and we'll play it back, dude. I said logistics. I said logistics. Law. It was like L A W G I L <laughs> logistics. But but how do yeah, you say log? Right. How, how do you say, you say it? log? It's log struck. logistics. It's yeah. It struck him. Thomas was immediately like, you're an idiot, Tyson. And I was like, it's not the first time. Uh, and it won't be the last, Thomas. But I'm... Uh, all right. Let's talk I'm about... Uh, let's talk about PPA, Desert Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, actually, let's... Well, so are you not going to go play singles to clarify? Do you just withdraw? Or like, because you're in the bracket. He wasn't really in the bracket. He's in the bracket that's publicized, but they took him out of the bracket when he was like, I don't play singles. I'm 36. Yeah. I right? think they actually kept, they, they kept me in and gave Julian Arnold a, a oh. free win. So oh. props to him. I think that's, I think Congratulations. That's so yeah. he should, he should split that with me. He should. <laughs> we'll, we'll come rough him up a little bit this weekend. If he's not giving you your, are you, guys, are you guys coming out here? Thomas for sure is he's leaving tonight and he'll be out there. I, my wife is out of town. And so I have my two uh, daughters with me. So I'm going to try and come up Sunday. Uh, cool. I'm like 40 minutes away. So oh, we'll okay. see if we nice. do. I'll, uh, I'll hunt you down and say hello. Um, so. who, are, who are, who are our, uh, from your perspective, you're on the inside. I'm on the outside. Tyson's on the outside. Who are some of the, like the players to watch this year just in pickleball generally? Like who are maybe some names that people aren't thinking about? You're like that person can make a run in 2022. Mm. Like we're talking about people that are like under, under the radar, not just yeah. like, not just pros that are good. That could take the next step. Both. Give me both. both. Yeah. How, yeah. How we, who's winning? Who's winning this year to give us like a, very sure like i'm sure that this person who hasn't necessarily been winning in the past a bunch is going to be winning all this year and then somebody even deeper down who nobody is assuming is going to be winning but could also win um uh, it's a good question um i think i think it's impressive um, I think it's impressive what Kohler's done. Um, Mr. Biscuit, fellow Dreamland guy. Um, yeah, he, he, he really, he really bundled up, you know, summer, summer and beyond, uh, last year. So I think, I mean, his hand, his hands are very fast. He's very compact with his volleys and quick hands. Um, his his defense has gotten much better. His mid court stuff. Um, so, don't know what his ceiling is. I don't know if he's there. 
Um, but I do think it's been very impressive what he's been able to do. Um, so, you know, maybe one of those guys that could kind of take the next step, but depending on who he's got as a partner, um, I think he's playing a lot with Thomas Wilson this year. Yep. Um, yep. I don't know how much Thomas is looking to play tournament wise and how committed he's going to be. Uh, that's a big factor. You know, I think he, I think if he played a lot and really committed, I mean, he's got a full-time job, uh, you know, kind of like a sales nine to five job. So that makes it very difficult in terms of balancing both. He signed with um, the PBA. But I don't think he actually did. Uh, he's oh, on the don't? posters and stuff, but I, I don't think he's actually signed. Don't quote but, me. I'm not sure. But um, the last I heard was that he was not signed. Hmm, interesting. So they announced it. And yeah, you're right. He's on the banners, which, by the way, you're like, essentially like your first year in pro pickleball. It's the second. You're like yeah. six months in. Uh, you're on the banner. It's PPA. All right. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> not bad. I mean, no, but the PPA has only been around for three years. So if you're yeah, going to yeah, timeline yeah. everything, Thomas Shields. But I mean, if you just look at the banners from last year, it was like Matt Wright, Tyson McGuffin, Ben yeah. Johns, Riley Newman, and then yeah. now like Thomas Wilson is up there. Yeah. It's like, all right. Do you think yeah. that was part of I his mean, contract to get, to that he didn't Thomas, sign? You know, a lot of credit. <laughs> you have to, you have to put me on the banner, but I'm not signing. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's a you know, that's a boss move right there. I want his I want his attorney. Um, no, but Thomas has been playing quite a while, but he uh, just hasn't played a lot of tournaments. He's always been, in my opinion, one of the most talented guys out there. Um, crazy fast, really good defense, massive forehand, uh, fast hands. So, like, I'm not surprised at all at how well he's done hopping in, especially having a good partner like like his cousin. Um, which and, is AJ Kohler. Which is Kohler. Yeah, they know each other. They obviously know each other well. They Good chemistry, that kind of thing. So that, that clearly helps. Um, cause one, honestly, I talk about this a lot. One of the toughest things coming into pro pickleball is, is, you know, finding a partner and cause everybody's booked so far out. So you kind of just, you take what you can get, but if you can come in right away, like Thomas has and have colder, that makes things a lot easier. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even at the lower levels, it is hard to find partners that, you know, so I can't even imagine as the, with how competitive it is speaking of partners, what new partnerships that we maybe haven't seen or seen very much are you most afraid of most afraid of uh um, yeah i don't know if afraid is the right word i think really curious to see how it goes like i, I one i like most intimidated by <laughs> not afraid intimidated or just know that they are going to crush Petrified. yes uh, obviously riley matt will be really interesting uh-huh. um you got two big dudes good reach both with uh, elite hands, in my opinion. Uh, how do you handle them? Who, who are you going to? What's that? What's the, how do you handle those guys? Give us the give us the kryptonite. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't know which side who's going to play which side. Um, honestly, that'll be that'll be kind of one of the issues and uh, keys to like I think strategy. If you know if Matt's playing the right, I'm going to try to be on his. I'm trying to make him hit a lot of backhand dinks, to be honest. Um, obviously not trying to speed up into the Riley Newman pancake. I've done that a lot. Doesn't work. Yeah. Doesn't work out well. Um, I still can't learn that lesson. I'm hoping maybe if I play him eight more times that I'll stop by the ninth, but I haven't stopped. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't stopped trying to speed up to his pancake yet. Um, so, so yeah, right. Is good? So I would, yeah. I would try to I would try to keep dinking with him. Honestly, Matt likes to speed up with his forehand. He's dangerous with it. If I can keep it on Matt's left foot, that's where I'm going. Got it. I like it. Um, Tyson, Tyson, Tyson. Had it. Is he is he peeing or what's he doing? Yeah, he had to go pee. He just texted me. He goes, wrap it. I got to pee. And two and two episodes ago, he like just stopped in the middle of the podcast to go pee. I Got remember. I saw, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. This is like his, like, this is his thing. This is a signature thing. I, like you yeah, got to go, go one hour without peeing. Come on. Yeah. It's kind of wild, but he, you know, he stays hydrated as he, as he likes to say, shout out, shout out relight. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah. 
Um, but no, I think uh, we are just about at time anyway. So we might as well wrap it. Oh, up and comers. Got to get more, sh uh, more shout outs to uh, my local Austin boys. They did a, they had a great showing this past weekend. Uh, Brandon, Brandon and Sek Pong. Yeah. Um, at the APP. Uh, he played with Unicorn actually out in, I think, Mesa and, you know, got a win over Declo and Adam. So Brandon's been playing in Austin. Like he was one of the first guys I played with when I started pickleball um, with Walter and Christina Dorman and San Marcos. Shout out to them um, who are also watching Lucy right now. Thank goodness, because Lucy's our dog. So Lucy yeah. would be homeless without the Dorman right now. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Brandon, yeah. Brandon and his, uh, his partner, Stefan, uh, both have good upside. They're the righty lefty combo. So I would say watch out for those guys on the APP tour. Got it. Okay. Wait, last thing, by the way, Tyson, not only do you have to pee a lot, you pee really fast. Yeah. What's well, that? None of that makes you, sense. <laughs> so the bathroom is like literally through one door here and I showered yesterday. So I didn't wash my hands cause it's unlucky. What did you just say? Just kidding, but <laughs> <What>? <laughs> look like at Rob's disgusted too. No, but uh, the bathroom is literally like 10, okay, 10 feet, like five steps away from me here. All right, we believe you, dude. It's okay. And uh, I, I don't think you're I'm torn going because yes. I record podcasts almost every day, and I also start my morning with like a full liter of water and two coffees. And so then I know, like, I try to stay as dehydrated as I can before we sit down to record, but still like health over everything, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. But then we're <laughs> in agreement. Rob, before, before we wrap, are yeah. you going to sell your car? Do you want a car? Yeah. Oh, that sounds like you might just give it away. <laughs> oh, free car. <laughs> car for you. <laughs> car for you. Uh, no, because, oh, like I said, it's going to be splitting time. So I'll, I'll still be back quite often. We'll need a, need a vehicle. Mm. But uh, I have some. I'm in the maybe market. when we are not there. You know, it'd be cool is if uh, Tesla would get that self driving thing all the way figured out so you could just send your car to wherever you were flying into, Rob, and then, uh, you know have it take you to the events from there i don't know how it would get to yeah that would be that would be fantastic actually you tell the ai Blocks to drive it yeah vlog some miles like that yeah well, you, right, would. There you definitely be, would there should be less risk with that right because there's no passenger it just is driving itself yeah i think i think it's fine except for that if there's some road stuff because it follows the lines and stuff so if the lines are covered for whatever reason or something like that. There still is some issues. Yeah. All right. It's, we got probably not far off though. Yeah. We got a wrap, and uh, I wanted to try out this new sign off. Hmm. I'm, oh, I'm ready. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. That was it. Okay. Bye. <laughs>